Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, and as you can see, I'm sitting here with the Quarren Tool and Cutter Grinder. I've pretty much finished it, and I did the alignment of it yesterday, and I took some, some video of that. That's what you'll see in the next few segments of this video today. I also wanted to say this is probably the last video that I'll be doing on the Quarren Tool and Cutter Grinder specifically kind of it's been over a year since I started the project and it's basically complete now now comes the real fun of trying to work learn how to use it and um, along those lines I wanted to point out I've, I've made uh, on my channel there's a lot of helpful resources that in my project you've got my, uh, uh, several playlists on my YouTube channel the first one is called my corn tool grinder build and that's got, right, as of yesterday, it has 67 videos. I'll add this video to it. So it'll be a total of 68 videos for the build series. It takes you through everything through the making the ball handles to the, the how I machined the spiral in the, in the vertical column, how I machined the castings. And if you want to build one of these projects, hopefully that series will be very useful to you. Then I have, I started one a playlist a long time ago before I decided to build one. It's just called corn, and anything I found on YouTube that was corn related, uh, a corn tool and cutter grinder related, I added to that. So there's 87 videos in that playlist. There's also a new playlist that I just started called Using Corn Tool Grinders. As of today, that's got five videos in it. Um, two are from a gentleman named F. Clef, and three are from Dan Hill at Hill's Gun. So thank you to you gentlemen for your contribution and finally one of the biggest motivational factors that I had in, in motivating me to, to start my project um, Maddie's workshop um, I started a playlist he, he built one of these corns and he, uh, I started a playlist it's called Maddie's corn tool grinder project and there's 11 videos in it so lots of resources for you here on YouTube and Thanks again for joining me on this project. It's been really enjoyable, really exciting, and stay tuned for the next probably 20 minutes or so. I'll show you what I did for the basic alignment steps for my corn. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Stay tuned. I've got new projects coming. Um, most specifically, I think the next thing will be building some things for the Grizzly 8x, uh, excuse me, the Grizzly 12x36 gunsmith lathe and some other exciting live steam stuff coming your way. Thanks again, everybody. Hey, folks, in this segment, I'm going to talk about the aligning of the corn. There's basically three tests to do, the first of which is what they call the turnaround test, and it's described in the book on page 71, on the book I got, anyway. So the first thing I did was to get out all my precision measuring equipment and try to figure out what the best thing I could use. As you can see, I've got a couple of old but very nice interrapid dial test indicators. This is an imported one. And this one is an interrapid. And it came in a, a set that I bought from a retiring machinist. This, I've got the back plunger Starrett that I use for tramming my mill. That's my favorite one. I've got a couple of others. But this interrapid over here, it's a half thou just like the other one. This is my favorite thing for doing precision setups, and you probably have seen that, seen me use it in the past. But for this particular instance, the first thing I did, one, I wanted to show this. I used, I've got a, some good levels, some machinist levels. So the first thing I did was to use the machinist level and set it basically so it's parallel with the bars. They don't talk about doing that in the book. But I thought that would be a good first step to make sure this thing is basically level and essentially on the same plane as the two bars before you start the turnaround test. The next thing I did, and I'll, I'm going to just I'll stop filming here in a second and get this set up. But I've been fiddling around with this for about a half hour and I got it within a couple of thou of either side basically tramming this using the... What is this thing called? This, uh, oh, the Noga indicator. Sorry. These little Noga indicators are great. I use them all the time now. And um, I'll show you the setup in just a second. Let me get this uh, 
get this is just an ordinary bar in here but you just want something that will hold solid so I'm gonna bring you back in a second when the with the indicator on it okay now you can see how I've got the little Noga indicator on a steel bar that's securely tightened you also want to loosen up or maybe even remove all your little ball handles the locking pieces because they get in the way as you're trying to rotate the rotating head around but this I'm not going to film me doing the process but it's the best thing I can do to say to explain it it's a lot like tramming your your um, head on your milling machine because you're just that's what you're trying to do is to get this this axis zero so there's you know the exact same measurement on either side of the front bar with um, with your micrometer so I was able so far when I decided to stop and take the video I was able to get it within about three or four thou of either side and it's really tricky because you, it's you're loosening this ball handle here and then just using muscle force basically to gently align it and it's I mean it's it's frustrating to be honest with you to get the exact zero that's part of the reason I don't want to film it um, you get the idea just go back and forth the sweeping the turnaround test till you get it zeroed out so that's what I'm gonna work on next okay hey folks been out here about an hour and I finally got the turnaround test ready and I'm ready to mark the zero index there probably trying to be a lot more accurate than I really need to be because having ground end mills before basically if, at least as far as end mills go I mean you're set you're using this thing to set the initial angle as long as that angle stays the same it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus you know a fraction but trying to be as accurate as I can got it set the turnaround test I use this little brass punch and brass hammer to just touch the the indicator arm to make the final adjustment I finally got that dialed in so I'll just show you the sweeping motion so right here I'm, I'm reading 73 thou on the plunger and I'm very carefully notice I'm not messing with anything else not messing with the Noga arm you want to move your little octopus arms out of the way so nothing interferes with your indicator and I'm just sweeping it around and I'll come over here just very careful not to touch anything else and arms out of the way I don't know if this is going to show up good on the video or not but just really gently bring it up on the uh, on the rod there and I got 73 3000 on the indicator here too so I'm gonna stop videotaping and I'm gonna take my little scriber little carbide tip scriber and just make a little notch where the zero to, to line up with the zero here and that's gonna be good enough to begin with um, we'll see you know I'm gonna go through my plan is to go through all three of these tests alignment tests and get everything marked as good as I can then I'll start using it and I'll see if I need to change anything so that's the turnaround test okay folks the next test is aligning the rotating base with the front bar make sure they're in the same plane and what they show in the book on in my book it's on page 72 they simply mount the dial test indicator on the the tooth rest holder here and then move the front bar back and forth to get it to zero so I've got mine pretty close I'm not sure if this is exactly it what I'm doing here instead of using the tooth rest I've got the Noga um, ma magnetically attached to the base over here and then I've got the it's a interrapid half thou indicator you probably can't see the dial that much but it's right on the 10 right now and I notice when I release the set screw it moves the indicator moves a couple thou so what I've been doing is I'll move this to a new position and then tighten up the set screw and you'll see let's see how it comes back so that's pretty close it's come back to about 13 and a half thou right there so I'm going to use I'll, I'll just move it in position use loosen the set screw move it in position tighten the set screw back up again then make my little adjustments and get it as close as I possibly can to zero that's the only thing I can think to do because this is just an ordinary piece of 5 8 inch bar it's not a hardened and ground you know turned ground polished bar um, in in the case uh, that I'm using so I'll just do my best and, and get that and then once I have it I'll make the zero mark with my scriber 
I took the scriber and I ground it on my carbide wheel so that it's a nice sharp point and it did give a nice scratch mark there for the zero for the tilting bracket so I'll just you know like I said I hopefully that's pretty obvious what needs to happen you know going back and forth and then marking the zero here surprisingly I mean just eyeballing it I got it within a couple thou so I don't think it'll be too hard to get it real close to zero okay that wasn't too bad I just played around with it back and forth and ended up using my brass hammer a tap 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 here and there and I got it so it's locked on 15 so I'm gonna go ahead and use that I've got this marked notice one thing I, I want to point this out I don't know if you guys can see the little dial but just tightening up the the um, the the ball handles you're gonna make the needle move a little bit so you know it, I'm just trying to point that out because this is not rocket science but you want to be as accurate as possible but you know you've you've spent a year machining your your tool um, don't freak out if if you know when you when you move the ball handle the thing moves a little bit that's just that's life in the big city so I'll tighten that up I'll mark my zero all right, I just wanted to show my little zero zero mark. I put a it's probably hard to see. But I put a little V shape, like carpenters use, to point to the, where the mark is, and I scratched the zero line, and it's hard to see. You really can't see, but I lined up with the the zero on the table. I scratched a little line. Hopefully, you can see that there. I'm thinking as time goes on, I'll be able to mark that with a little engraving tool or something once I'm sure that that's the the mark sorry I wish that showed up a little bit there you can kind of see the little scratch mark that aligns with the zero the zero long line anyway okay so that's two out of the three tests done okay the third test according to the book is to make a special mandrel that you can tighten up inside your spindle and I have not made one of those I was thinking about using this thing this is the the mandrel that I made for tightening up on on my um, arbors for the grinding stones but that's not I don't think it's going to be accurate enough so what I did think the outside of the spindle for the, at least this little three-quarter inch portion that's showing I know this is accurate because of all the time I took in machining and what I can do is move if you can see the that's the spring loaded front bar as I move as I bring that out let me see if you can see the whole as I turn counterclockwise the entire assembly is moving towards the the spindle head and you can see a little variation there see right here it's just under the zero back off the camera a little bit we go clockwise here for the length of travel and right up to about five thou close to the end a little bit higher than that yeah five and a half Okay, and at about the end of travel there, it's about six and a half thou. And what's interesting, they said the book says you can make the adjustments using these um, conical screws that you have on either side. So we know that this part needs to come up a little bit. Let's see. Let me just show the the impact of of that screw. I'm just. I'm just moving it, let me back out a little bit, just moving it a, a little bit, and I'm getting quite a bit of movement on the spindle thing there. So that's what I'll do. I'm not going to video the entire alignment part, process, but I'm, I'll am i do this this process. I'll go back and forth several times, and just, just like kind of centering a forejaw, I'll get it, um, I'll, I'll move it halfway in each time, and then when I finally have it to about zero movement, then I'll be able to tighten that nut up and snug up the ones on the other side there. And it should be should keep my spindle uh, parallel to the axis of the front bar. So hope that makes sense, and I hope this is enjoyable to everybody. Um, pretty cool to see the whole thing put together and and start using the pieces of it and 
Let me know if you have any questions. I guess I'll probably... This might be the last segment that I do because I don't want to make this too long of a video. So give me a thumbs up. Ask questions if you like. Appreciate all the new subscribers. Thanks again, everybody. We appreciate you. And one more thing I wanted to show. I noticed, I remember when I built the... Um, the thimble and I tried all the different things you know putting in the black shoe polish and so forth in reality you can actually see those numbers pretty good and you can see my index mark there real good so I think that's gonna that's gonna be nice and I don't know if you can see but I'm, I'm pushing it in all the way that so the the screw is pushing that bar in as far as it'll go now let me pull it out, rotate it counterclockwise, and you'll see this part move um, correspondingly. Because there's a spring down in this end. This this uh, control bar needs to be loose. These need to be tight so that the unit is snug up on the bar. But if as you rotate it counterclockwise, hopefully you can see that, but it's moving just a little bit and, and you can see you can see the thimble moving out each rotation is fifty thousandths of movement here on the bar because I had a twenty thread, twenty threads per inch, seven sixteenths twenty threads. So that will bring the work into the grinding wheel. That's what the whole point there is. I just wanted to point out how cool that looks. Came out really nice.